Despite the fact that I haven't really watched the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime in a very, very long time, I still think it's interesting to review cards that the anime group together, but only look at them from a competitive stance. If you watch those shows, maybe you're a little bit more biased when reviewing particular cards, because maybe in the shows they were better than they were in real life. But because I haven't watched the anime, I can just review them as objectively as possible and talk about how good or bad they were in a competitive sense. A couple weeks ago, I did this exact same video video style reviewing the 5D Signer Dragons, which are some of my favorite synchro monsters in the game, and in today's video we're going to do the top requested sort of next installment on that video, and that's reviewing the Dimension Dragons. Admittedly, I didn't really know which cards these were, but once I looked them up I was pleasantly surprised because, spoiler alert, every single one of these Dimension Dragons actually was a competitive card or is a competitive card, and that's something that we don't really see a lot with anime cards, especially in things like Ace Monsters or things along those lines. A lot of times anime cards have a lot of text but not really amounting to anything. Cards that aren't very competitive and are just very specific to the anime that they appeared in. However, in the case of the Dimension Dragons, they actually are pretty good, which is really cool. It's sort of anime cards done right because it means if you liked these cards in the anime, you can play them in the TCG and actually have some pretty viable cards. Anyway, without further ado, let's review the four Dimension Dragons. Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon was one of the very first Pendulum Monsters ever released acting as the cover card for Duelist Alliance, which was the first core set with Pendulums. It was actually pretty hyped on release for a ton of different reasons. The main reason is the Pendulum effect, or one of the Pendulum effects, the main one that says, during your end phase, you can destroy this card, and if you do, add one Pendulum monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand, and then it's a hard ones per turn effect. That effect is very, very good, especially as one of the first Pendulums release, because it basically means that anytime in the future when there's a Pendulum release, with 15 or 1500 or less attack, you can just search it immediately. Well, not quite immediately. You have to wait a little bit for that. But a lot of people really did think that was a very good search effect. We see tons of effects like this seen competitive play, namely also release in Duelist Alliance Skarm, which is the Burning Abyss card that searches during the end phase. Obviously, a little bit easier to trigger because you just have to put it in the graveyard. It doesn't have to be on the field. The main downside of Pendulum Dragon, though, is the scale. Scale 4 is really, really bad, which means that this card worked best in decks that didn't really care about the scale or that could destroy their own scale so you could put this to scale it during the end phase and then just not really have to deal with it during your main phase or anything along those lines. Overall this card did see a lot of play. It saw some play in Cliff Forts but I think this card really reached its peak in 2016 especially at the NAWCQ. A lot of different people were playing different variants of Pendulums using Sky Iris and Odd Eyes and a whole slew of other monsters and in that regard this card actually saw a ton of success not only because because you could search it with Sky Iris, but the monster effect, the if this card battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage this card inflicts to your opponent is doubled, was extremely relevant and led to a ton of different OTKs. Pendulums have changed a lot over the past years even, obviously now they're a lot more uh, heavy metal foes Electromite focus, but back in 2016 a lot of players were using Pendulum Dragon for those quick OTKs, dealing a ton of damage with one card is definitely good for a deck that wants to end the game in one turn. And then Surprisingly to some people, in the very next release, New Challengers, we actually got another Dimension Dragon, and that's Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. And this is a rank 4 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and all it takes is just two level 4 monsters. You can take any level 4s, and it says you can attach two materials from this card, then target one face of monster your opponent controls, its attack becomes half its current attack, and if it does, this card gains that lost attack. We see this exact same type of effect in Boral Sword Dragon, a very popular link 4 monster right now, and when this card was released, a lot of people really didn't play it. It's not the worst rank 4 monster out there, but there were plenty of other good rank 4s that people were playing. I think at this point in time, a lot of people were playing things like Castell or Abyss Dweller. This card really didn't catch on until the release of Phantom Knights. And Phantom Knights, they're mostly level 3, at least the ones that people were playing, but the big thing here is the Phantom Knights rank 3 monster, Breaksword. You see, when Breaksword is destroyed, you get to special summon 2 Phantom Knight monsters from your graveyard in increase their level to four, that's a pretty big deal, and while that might be used in a variety of combos, one restriction that it places on you is that you can't summon non-dark monsters for the rest of the turn, which really locks you into just a handful of rank fours that you can bring out. One of the best ones is Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, and therefore this card has basically been a staple in every single Phantom Knight variant for a very, very long time. Clear Wing Synchro Dragon is a level seven synchro monster that's completely generic, just like all of these monsters 
sponsors that we've talked about so far and it has probably the most text i mean maybe odd eyes does but a lot of odd eyes text is just a really long way of saying that you search a pendulum monster but clear wing actually has a ton of different effects in here that we kind of need to break down one by one so you can see what this card does first off once per turn when another level five or higher monster activates its effect on the field as a quick effect you can negate the activation and if you do destroy it once per turn as the second effect here when a monster effect is activated that targets a level five or higher monster on the field and no other cards once again a quick effect you can negate the activation and if you do destroy it if this card's effect be destroys a monster this card gains attack equal to the destroyed monster's original attack until the end of this turn this thing has a lot going on and it's been used in a variety of strategies especially ones back when cross souls came out if you were playing level seven synchros at all a lot of times you were playing one copy of black rose and one copy of clear wing because this card's pretty dang good when it goes off so the first effect is a pretty big deal against any deck that loses uses even one level five or higher monster that has an effect clear wing synchro dragon can stop that there are tons of monsters out there especially back pre-link summoning that had a lot of levels and really good effects namely this card is exceptional against other synchro monsters whether or not they're level seven or level eight those are the more popular ones but it can be used against pretty much anything as long as it's a level five or higher monster and that made it a pretty unique addition to any deck that was using synchro monsters its second effect can protect itself or any other level five or higher monster from a targeting effect and that's great but what's also really great is that if that targeting effect was a monster effect and you destroy that monster the clear wing single dragon gains a ton of attack points until the end of the turn one of the most efficient ways to deal with this card is through battle so if it gains a bunch of attack points it's really hard to actually take this off the field admittedly as time went on clear wing single dragon saw less and less play it probably fell off the competitive landscape faster than any of the other cards on this list but overall it was still a very solid card when people were playing it and it's a little bit harder to make in decks that are link summoning these days and also it's a little bit less good because link monsters don't have uh, any levels or anything like that when this card was out obviously there were already exceeds monsters but even back then there were still tons of high level monsters in the metagame whereas nowadays when we look at extra decks a lot of times it's just like 12 link monsters or 15 link monsters not a lot of different opportunities for clear wing to actually use its effect and that brings us to the final of the four dimension dragons and actually the only case of one of them being complete garbage when it came out and the most competitive now in 2019 so it's kind of interesting to look at and that's starving venom fusion dragon now this thing is a fusion monster and it's not generic which is probably good because uh, generic fusion monsters are pretty scary and we'll talk about that in a second but this thing takes two dark monsters on the field except tokens that might sound kind of strange but the main way that this card is summoned is via super polymerization a card that in the ocg is at two but in the tcu we just got it back to one a few forbidden limited lists ago and a lot of players are using this card so what does it do besides the fact that it takes two dark monsters well if this card is fusion summoned you can make this card gain an attack equal to one opponent's special summoned monster until the end of this turn so once again we sort of see the same theme happening here i know odd eyes doesn't have this but all these uh, except odd eyes have an attack gaining effect and in all three cases of this one dark rebellion and clear wing they can gain a lot of attack points pretty fast in the case of starving venom fusion dragon most of the time you'll be gaining somewhere along the lines of upward of 2,000 attack points at least for that turn that's a pretty big deal also once per turn you can target one level five or higher monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn this card's name becomes that monster's original name and replace this effect with that monster's original effect realistically this almost never matters it sometimes matters but i don't think it really comes up too often it's kind of cool and actually the upgraded version of this i don't know the technical term is on the ban list that's a pretty big deal but that one actually targets things in the graveyard to copy their effects so that's a lot better than this effect but sometimes it's relevant but that's not really the main reason this card is played but it's on there and then also if this fusion summon card is destroyed you can destroy all of your opponent's special summon monsters that is a huge sort of regeki type effect pretty big deal on this card because it has a ton of attack points it can hit really hard and then if on your opponent's turn they deal with this thing they're losing their entire board in a lot of different situations so why is this card so good well it's so good because it takes two dark monsters and there's tons of decks right now that play two dark monsters on the field at the same time namely this card was an excellent counter against the pre amorphage goliath fields that danger thunder dragons would put up basically all of their monsters would be dark 
Phoenix. You had Hot Red Dragon Archie and Abyss, which is a dark monster. You had Zombie Stein, which is a dark monster. You have Colossus, which is a dark monster. All the cards on their field were dark monsters, so you could use Super Poly to just break it immediately. Oh yeah, and if they deal with the monster you summon, it just destroys all their field again. That's a really, really huge one card out to most Thunder Dragon boards, and it led a lot of people to play this card. There's also a Preta plant that people play, but this one is a little bit better if your opponent's only playing dark monsters. It's also exceptional, even if your opponent doesn't quite combo off, they just end with like a couple danger monsters, maybe a Skull Dread. You can still use this on danger monsters, unlike the Drago Stapelia, or what, however you pronounce that card, the Preta plant card that people play, which needs one fusion monster. This thing can just be summoned with any dark monsters. They can be dark blades for all I care. It doesn't really matter. As long as there's two dark monsters on the field, you can summon this thing with super poly, and that's a huge deal in a metagame where one of the top decks is using dark monsters a lot. Overall, hopefully you guys can appreciate the fact that I like these monsters despite not really understanding their context in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. I'm sure a ton of people have already commented at the very start of this video what these cards mean in the context of the show, but personally I can just appreciate that Konami made a group of anime cards that are actually competitively viable in the physical card game. Anyway though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like these reviews, if you like me reviewing cards from the anime in a TCG context, please let me know in the comment section below which cards you'd like me to review in the next video. i just like to remind you that the only reason I reviewed the Dimension Dragons is because so many people asked me to, so the comments actually do make a pretty big difference in future videos. I'll see you guys later though. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.